What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I got a 2013 uh, X5. This in the BMW world is known as an E70 chassis. Um, the engine that's in it is an N63. And today we're going to be doing spark plugs on it. Uh, truck's got about 94, 95,000 miles on it. Uh, I believe they're due at 60,000 miles. Uh, we're actually doing them right now uh, in relation to a drivability complaint. Um, it skips under uh, hard acceleration and goes into limp mode. Uh, swapped coils around, doesn't change anything. It's always the same cylinders. I actually pulled out spark plugs out of the cylinders that it was setting the misfires for, and they are extremely uh, fuel fouled. Um, I'll show you what that looks like when I take them out, but they're just fouled, they're worn. We're gonna be putting new ones in to fix that problem. So I'm gonna go walk you through the process of getting these spark plugs replaced and show you, you know, it's not too difficult to do and you can do it on your own. So let's get started. All right, before we get started, I wanted to go over a little uh, tools that are necessary to do this job. So it's pretty simple. Um, you're gonna need a regular flat blade screwdriver, some kind of trim removal tool. You don't necessarily need the trim removal tool. You can actually get away with using the flat blade screwdriver to do this, but the trim removal, removal tool makes it easier. Um, flashlight to make things easier to see. I have some LEDs underneath the hood so you'll be able to see really well, but if you have just a regular pocket flashlight of some kind, that works as well. Um, a hook pick, preferably. You don't necessarily need this, but I use this sometimes when the coils are a little stuck to help work them out of the, uh, the holes in the cylinder heads. Um, pair of pliers, just in case there's anything that you have to pop off, such as like a wiring harness or anything like that. It's just always good to have a pair of pliers around. Obviously, if you're doing this at home, I would expect that you have a pretty basic set of tools, including pliers. Um, a 3 8 ratchet, some varying sizes of extensions so that you can work with, you know, the area because it's a little bit tight in there when you're getting in there. So you're going to need some various extensions. I prefer locking extensions for the most part. I have this one here that's not, but the other three are because the spark plug socket when you're pulling the spark plug out or pulling it off of the spark plug after you've put a new one in the spark plug socket has a lot of drag on the spark plug and if you don't have something that's got a good hold on the socket it'll just pull the extension right off the socket so i like locking extensions for that um on that note the spark plug socket is actually a special socket it is a 14 millimeter 12 point socket this is actually a spark plug socket for this job. You can use a regular 14 millimeter 12 point socket. It just won't hold onto the spark plug when you're putting new ones in. Um, I would recommend getting this. I'll put a link in the description down below for this because I actually purchased this myself from Amazon. Um, you're gonna need a 16 millimeter socket to take the strut tower braces off in order to get the air boxes out. 13 millimeter for the uh, some of the cowl trim. Six millimeter holding the cowl trim down and 10 millimeter holding the cowl trim down as well and I will point that out as I'm going through and then I have some power tools here to make my job a little bit easier but you don't necessarily need to have these you can use regular hand tools to do this job so let's get into this. Alright so the first thing you guys are going to want to do is take this cowl trim off. Now the way this is set up is one side comes off before the other. passenger side comes off first and the reason they did that is because you'll have to take this passenger side trim off a lot more than the other side due to the fact that the microfilter housing is in here and it's something that you're gonna have to replace more often than doing with the brake flush and stuff over there so actually made this side easier to take out uh, it appears as the last person that was in here did not tighten these cam locks down to hold this microfilter housing down just when you're doing yours these cams, these little 13s on here and on the trim along the top are actually like a half turn and it twists a cam here, as you can see, to lock it in place. So you half turn loosen and it unlocks it so you can pull it off and you, when you're putting it back together, you half turn tighten. Okay, so the next step is to get this cowl trim here out. So, as you can see right here, there's these five millimeter allens here, and then down here and here, there's 10 millimeter bolts. There's two five millimeter allens on that side, two 10 millimeter bolts. There's two 10 millimeter bolts on this side, two five millimeter allens back here, and then here in the middle, there's two more five millimeter allens, and then this whole cowl trim piece comes out. Um, before you take it out, there's actually two plastic clips here on either side 
that you're gonna have to pop out from the other side in order to pull the power trim out, the cowl trim out. So we're gonna pull all these screws out first and then we'll get the pop rivets out. All right, your next step is gonna to be to get these two crossbars out. 16 millimeter bolts holding it down on either end. Just undo the 16 millimeter bolts and pull those crossbars out in order to get these boxes out. Cause these air boxes will not clear those trying to pull them out this way. There's not enough room underneath here to clear it. So we're gonna get those pulled out. All right, next is gonna be get air boxes out. It's pretty simple, loosen up all four of these clamps on either side. Pull back your boots. Take your mass rifle sensor connectors off. This one's on top, this one's underneath. You're gonna pull your wiring out here. We're going to pop these clips here up and then pull up on actually before you do that gotta get these air intake boot ducts out as well so these are just snapped into these front cowl trims pull them off the box same with this side pull it off the box and these Air boxes just come up. You gotta get this fuel line off on this side. It's one air box out. And pull up on these air boxes. The air box is actually sitting on two rubber grommets here. They sit on these studs on the motor. So there's gonna be a little bit of resistance to you pulling the air boxes up, but they come up pretty easily. So now that I get the air boxes out, I'm gonna go into detail on doing spark plugs. All right, so now that we got all the stuff out of the way, air boxes out of the way, air ducts, cowl trim, all that, wasn't too hard. A few tools here and there, but nothing important, nothing crazy. Um, we get into the special tool. Like I said, 14 millimeter 12 point socket that has a rubber insert on the inside that's supposed to hold on to the spark plug body. It's not necessary to use this. I recommend getting this just because it will make your life a lot easier when you're doing this. I've done this job before without the spark plug socket and it is not, it's just easier with the spark plug socket, believe me. Um, so when you get in here, as you can see, contrary to most BMW engines, this is actually very, very easy to get to the spark plugs on. This is bank one. Uh, what designates BMW's bank one is the side that the oil cap is on. So no matter what engine you're working on, the oil fill cap is always bank one. And on this side, things are a little bit more covered up over here just because the way this air duct pipes in. But as you can see, all the spark plugs or coils are relatively easy to get to and spark plugs underneath those. So we're gonna start over here on cylinder one and pull your spark plug out, pull your coil out. Now I use that hook pick to hook into this thing. You have the potential of breaking this clip off of this ignition coil. They happen sometimes, but usually they're not under a, that much tension that you're gonna break the clip off. They usually pull out of the cylinder before they break the clip off. So that one was easy enough that I could do it by hand. Sometimes you need to get the hook pick in there so you can get a little leverage out here in order to pull those up.
All right, guys, so just got back from the test drive. Uh, like I said beforehand, I cleared faults out of it just so I could see if anything returned during the test drive. Um, I drove about four or five miles around the block here where I'm at. Um, I drove it hard, obviously, because the issue before was a skip under load. So I wanted to try to reproduce that same situation to see if it continued to skip. Um, drove smooth. Uh, compared to driving it beforehand, before doing the spark plugs compared to now, um, it's much more linear power delivery when I'm accelerating now versus what it was before. So I feel like the spark plugs were probably causing a little bit more than just the noticeable skip. I think they were probably causing some... Uh, on you know some issues with complete fuel burn and it was probably pulling a little bit of power because of that so now that you got good nice new spark plugs in there very linear power delivery drives great um as you can see the job's not too difficult uh probably take about an hour or more if it's your first time doing it it's it's a lot of stuff to take off as far as the cowl and stuff it's seems somewhat intimidating but once you get it apart you realize it's really not that big of a deal what you're taking apart so um if you guys have any questions about this job, please comment down below. Uh, I'll try to answer the questions as I can. Um, if this video helped you, please like the video. And I would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys later.